Hi everyone, welcome all to our biology class again. Today we are going to study about how the nutrients are absorbed into the cell or how the nutrients reach into the cell through the blood. In the first part of this chapter, we discussed about how the heart is functioning and how the heart helps to supply or to distribute the nutrients into the cell and about blood vessels and also about blood pressure, circulation, everything we have discussed. And now we are going to study or we are going to understand how these nutrients reach into the cell or how the cells get the nutrients from the blood. That is the main part. Okay, each and every cell should get the nutrients and oxygen through the blood. So, from the blood, how it is able to get into the cell. Okay, so we can start our part or today's part, nutrients into the cell. Nutrients to the cell. That is today's part. We know when the blood or when the blood is passing through the capillaries. Capillaries, you know, the thinnest or the smallest blood vessels. So, when the blood pass through the capillaries with pressure, what will happen? As we know, the capillary wall is having minute pores or minute holes. It is there. When we studied about three types of blood vessels, we have seen in the capillaries, there will be small holes on the wall. Through these minute holes, what will happen? The fluid part of the blood will be oozes out. It is a new word. Oozes. Oozes means what? It will be filtered. The fluid part will come out of the capillaries through the minute holes and that fluid part will be collected where in between the space of the cell in between the cells there will be small space in between the cells that space is called intercellular space inter cellular space so step by step you have to understand when the blood passes through the or capillaries, what will happen? The fluid part of the blood will be coming out. A new word is oozes out. If you, if it is difficult for you to remember, you can say, you can study like this. The fluid part of the blood will come out of the capillaries, and it will be collected where it will be collected in the intercellular space. Intercellular space means the space between the cells. There, that fluid part will be collected. That fluid part is having a name, it is tissue fluid. Tissue fluid. So, what is tissue fluid? Tissue fluid means the fluid part of the blood that came out of the capillary when it was flown, when it was you know, trans uh, circulated through the capillaries. That is what is called tissue fluid. Or the fluid part of the blood that is collected in the intercellular space is called what tissue fluid okay then the cell exchange what the nutrient and other waste material with the tissue fluid so tissue fluid will come in contact with what the cells because it is standing or it is occupying where in the intercellular space intercellular space means the space between the cell there they are occupied so cell will be in contact direct contact with what tissue fluid so that's why the cell will give the waste materials to the tissue fluid and it take the oxygen and also what the nutrients from the tissue fluid so exchange of material with the cell and tissue fluid takes place when when the tissue fluid come into the intercellular space then what will happen after that the tissue fluid will be absorbed back into the blood itself because it is formed from the blood and 
the exchange of material will take place after that it will be absorbed back into the blood itself but some part of the tissue fluid may enter into the lymph duct some amount or some quantity of the tissue fluid will be entering into the lymph duct lymph duct means a pipe or vessel that is used to carry the lymph so the tissue fluid that is entered into the lymph duct is called what lymph lymph so lymph is what itself tissue fluid itself but that tissue fluid when it is absorbed back into the blood some quantity or a few amount or quantity of tissue fluid may enter into the lymph duct and that is what is called or the lymph uh, tissue fluid that is entered into the lymph duct is called lymph okay this lymph is also having a major role in the transport of nutrients so these points are clear to you so today we are studying about how the nutrients are reaching into the cell the first point the when the blood pass or passes through the what capillaries what will happen the fluid part of the blood may ooze out or oozes out or it will be coming out then that is collected were in the intercellular space and that fluid or the fluid part of the blood that is collected were in the intercellular space is called what tissue fluid one more point in the tissue fluid there will not be rbc red blood cells will not be there larger proteins will not be there and platelets these are blood cells they will not be present or it will not be or such kind of materials will not be there why because their molecular size is high they are coming out through minute pores very small pores or very small holes so through that hole rbc cannot come out larger protein molecules cannot come out platelets cannot come out because their molecular size is larger that's why they cannot come out okay when we filter the tea by using a tea filter the tea powder will not come out why because there are minute holes through that holes the tea powder cannot come out like that here also this uh, fluid part of the blood is coming out through minute holes through that holes rbc cannot come out larger protein molecules cannot come out and platelets also cannot come out that's why they are not present were in the tissue fluid clear the next change of material from the tissue uh, from the cells are taking place through what tissue fluid then tissue fluid is absorbed back into the blood at that time some tissue fluid may enter into lymph duct they are called what lymph this is the first part of, that we have to study today is it okay then we can study about lymph the transport of fatty acid and glycerol that we have seen from the second chapter normally the fatty acid and glycerol that is absorbed directly into lacteals from the second chapter we have studied that so they are absorbed directly into lacteals just a minute fatty acid glycerol this two component that is they are the the last product formed after the digestion of fat okay so these two are absorbed were absorbed into lacteals lacteals are the part of lymph duct or like we know we say capillaries in the form of blood vessels like in the case of lymph duct the minute part is called lacteals so as the capillary contain blood what should the lacteals contain it contains lymph okay so fatty acid and glycerol is absorbed into lacteals and the lacteals contains what what <coughs> lymph okay then the lacteals combine then they combine and they form small
lymph duct small lymph ducts are formed by combining what the lacteals and the small lymph ducts are combined to form what large lymph ducts <coughs> from the small lymph ducts what are formed large lymph ducts are formed then this large lymph ducts they combine with what the blood vessel that is going to the heart that is vena cava we have studied in the last class so large lymph ducts combine with what vena cava vena cava contains what blood because that is the main vein that carry the blood from all parts of the body to directly to heart so vena cava combine or vena cava join with what heart heart so if the nutrients are reaching to the heart surely it will reach all the parts of the body so listen fatty acid and glycerol once again listen very well fatty acid and glycerol it will be where it will be separated in that form from the small intestine then there will be villus we have studied then will in, in at the inner part of the villus there will be what lacteals and blood capillaries then amino acid and glucose is absorbed into blood capillaries then lacteals it is the part of lymph duct and to the lymph lacteals what is absorbed the fatty acid and glycerol is absorbed it is the part of lymph duct then capillaries contains what blood and the lacteals contains what the fluid part that is called a lymph so fatty acid and glycerol is absorbed into lymph then it should reach into all cells of the body that we are going to study listen very well so it is directly absorbed into lacteals lacteals contains lymph and the lacteals combine together and form small lymph duct by the combination of what the uh, lacteals then small lymph ducts combine or join together and they form the large lymph duct okay then large lymph ducts combine with whom vena cava vena cava is the largest vein that carry blood to the heart okay and through the vena when it join with vena cava the nutrients will be reaching where in the blood until they join with vena cava it is only contain or it is only mixed in the lymph but that lymph will be joined with vena uh, blood in the vena cava and then it will reach into the heart when the heart contract it will reach or supply it will be supplied to all other cells of the body so the distribution or the transportation of fatty acid and glycerol is in this way okay so these components they form another system like circulatory system circulatory system is a major system in the body their heart is having a role blood is having another role and blood vessels are having another major role so these three are the parts of what circulatory system or blood circulatory system same way or in another way the lymphatic system is another system lymphatic system okay that is the system contained with the lymph and the lymph carrying part that we can see now lymphatic system lymphatic system lymphatic system means the organ system that is connected with the lymph and lymph vessels okay first we can see which are the parts of lymphatic system first part lymph capillaries lymph capillary we studied in another term that was what lacteals they are called lymph capillaries they are the minute part then after that lymph duct 
lymph ducts two types of lymph ducts we have studied one is small lymph duct and the other one is larger lymph duct both are lymph ducts another thing lymph node lymph nodes and the last one these two are new to you spleen so these four are the major parts of what lymphatic system or major organs in the lymphatic system which are the lymph capillaries then lymph duct lymph node and spleen this four then listen among these four these two which are the lymph node and spleen it is having a major role in defending pathogens or disease causing germs when microorganisms come to our body our body protect our or our body prevent or defend against such diseases you know, disease causing organisms there will be a protection that protection is given by whom lymph nodes and spleen so they are the defenders of our body okay or they try to defeat the disease causing organism to protect our body such a duty is also done by lymph node and whom the spleen so spleen and lymph node is the part of what lymphatic system and also it help our body to protect from disease causing organisms okay so these are the points that we have to study related to lymph and what other items that is healthy heart healthy heart here you know health sorry heart is having a major role in the supplying this nutrients and oxygen into all the cells of the body and health is working continuously without taking any rest such an organ is that so the health of the heart is very much important and the heart is to be protected from all so kinds of what do we say difficulties so for that a major problem or a major threat for the heart is the consumption of excessive fatty food when we consume the fatty food more what will happen that extra fat will be deposited at the inner walls of the arteries when they are deposited at the inner walls of the artery what will happen the inner diameter or inner space of the blood vessels or arteries will be reduced as a result what will happen there will be problems in the heart and a new term that is called atherosclerosis atherosclerosis is a condition where excess fat is deposited at the inner walls of the artery and such a condition is called the condition in which the extra fat is deposited at the inner walls of the arteries they are called atherosclerosis then if it is deposited there what will happen the inner diameter of the arteries will be reduced inner diameter will be reduced and also what will happen the elasticity blood vessels are able to you know contract and relax elastic in nature that elasticity also will be lost then sometimes when blood pass through such arteries what will happen it will be broken there will be chances for rupture rupture means breaking so there will be chances for breaking the blood vessels it is a problem and another thing sometimes the rbc will be stuck in the blood vessels because they will become rough the inner wall become rough then as a result the blood vessels blood cells will be deposited or blocked or stuck there and there will be chances for forming blood clot or there will be chances for clotting the blood 
then what will happen it will be a problem to get the blood into the heart and sometimes that blood clot will be formed in the coronary vessels and as a result what will happen there will be chances for heart attack so atherosclerosis is, is a condition where the fat is deposited in the arteries and as a result what will happen the diameter of the artery will be reduced and also what will happen one more problem the elasticity of the arteries also will be lost and as a result the blood vessels become rough and what will happen rbc and such other blood cells will be stuck and blocked there then blood clot will be formed that will lead to a condition of heart attack so to overcome this kind of problems what we can do improve or do exercises every day exercises then reduce the quantity of fat containing food materials include more vegetables in our daily diet so these are the solutions that we can do and also be free from tensions and other such you know mental issues and problems be free then be happy and be healthy so this is the condition so study all these points very well if anywhere if you are having doubt repeat really watch that part and try to understand and try to grasp it then do all the routine work prepare your note by yourself by hearing the class okay thank you have a nice